YouTube, what's up? What's happening? Here I am bringing you another video. So I'm just going to walk you guys through how I paint these. I'm just going to start by trying to take these apart and disassembling them. And the reason we want to disassemble is because we don't want to mask this. We don't want to risk getting paint on it. And uh, we want paint to go underneath there. So we want to be able to get paint all up in the areas where paint needs to go so and a lot of this stuff is just you know screwed in it's really nothing crazy what we have here is just a little normal flat little block what we're gonna start off by doing is get some water in a bucket like this and I have it about filled up halfway. I put a little bit of soap in it. So this is 1,000 grit sandpaper. And I thought this was open. This is not. And uh, I like using 1,000 grit because it's not super, super heavy. It's hard to run through the clear. If you get a project where you are unsure of how much clear there is on it, I would suggest maybe going at 1500 or something a little bit lighter or do a light run with a thousand and then switch to 1500. But what we're going to do is um, we're going to wrap this around our block, obviously, you know, like so, and we're just going to lightly hit the whole tank, um, especially all these flat areas with the block, you know, just really quickly. And um, then we're going to go back and hit all these edges by hand. Uh, and you want to be real careful around the edges because usually around the edges, um, the paint really doesn't sit on edges. Um, so you get a lot of rollover and stuff like this. So it's really uh, thin around these edges. Paint usually is really thin around the edges. Uh, so you got to be careful with that. But we're going to start off by sanding it. So right, I'm just going to take some soapy water, kind of spread it around. Make sure you kind of get a good cleaning of it first. I cleaned these off yesterday, but you can kind of still feel there's just wax and stuff on there, you know. But that's all right. A little bit of soapy water and some sandpaper will eventually eat through most of that. So, or all of it, really. So, what we're going to do is take our block here, and we're just going to start dipping in the water. And we're just going to start and slowly just working it around here. And you don't want to apply like too much pressure. You want the sandpaper to do the work. Um, you're not trying to like run through the paint. You're just trying to break up uh, the top layer of, of clear coat so that you could, uh, your new paint will have something to stick onto. Um, you know, we can't get a chemical adhesion, obviously, because this paint is already dry. It's already on there. It's, it's you know, probably more than a year old. Um, so what we need to do is get a, a, like a bond, an actual bond, an adhesion, let the paint actually have something to stick onto, right? And they won't stick on the smooth surface very well. But if you create these little ridges and stuff and you clean it off really good, there's, you know, you can form, um, it's not, it's not a chemical bond. It's just a, a regular bond, I guess. Um, but... All right, so now we go back to our other one, All right? And you can see here, right? you see that most of it is, uh, you know, doesn't have a shine. But you can see here we're in this curve here. I didn't do a very good job, right? It's still shiny, and if I wet it, obviously it's going to be really shiny. But you can see here, even where it's dry, there's still shiny spots. Um, this is okay, I guess, because it has that cover. Uh, but you really want to get a lot of that shine out. Um, you can kind of see maybe there's a little bit of a spot there. See, I'm reflecting the light, so you can kind of see there. Uh, but when I go like that, you can really see the, the curve. Uh, it has that light. And then we'll go around. 
in the back's important, but not as much because, again, you're never going to see that. So you just need to make sure it's all sanded to get a chemical bond. But uh, in this front area, you really, really want to be, be um, precise about it. So you want to get, get that and get in the other areas like this up here. See this around the edge here? It's still pretty shiny. And sometimes you'll get like uh, pits and stuff. And those oh, those are just wet spots. But you know, sometimes you get pits and stuff, and that's just from the previous painter, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, or orange peel. You know that this is a good way to get rid of orange peel. But sometimes the orange peel is so bad that there's really nothing you can do about it besides uh, try to get it as flat as possible. You know? So you can see I'm not wetting the whole thing this time. I'm just wetting, working with a wet sandpaper. And that way I can kind of see what areas I need to work on and uh, be able to hit those areas and concentrate those areas instead of just having to hit the whole thing over again. All right. So again, just let the sandpaper do its work. Uh, don't get frustrated that there's areas that are not hit. Because right, that's, that's what going over it again is for and if you take your time you'll end up with a better product than trying to rush it One here. As you can kind of see, it's pretty much done. There's a few little spots, but I mean, I'm really not going to be that much of a stiffler about it. Uh, especially because they're so minor. And I'd really hate to just dig through the corner. Um, it's pretty good. Here we are, day two. Uh, and what we're going to do today is we're going to put some artwork on here, right? So I got a cutout here, Grim Reaper, which is what's going to go on this bike. Just a basic little cutout you can see. It's nothing too crazy special. You know, we're going to use this to put a design on here. And, yeah. So what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to clean off the area we're going to work in. I'm just going to take some alcohol. And uh, we're going to clean this off real good. So. I've been, uh, since yesterday, I took these out, washed them really, really good with some nice clean water. So today all we're going to do is just, you know, try to make sure we re-clean that and get it super, super clean. Wipe that completely off. Make sure you're using a clean, clean cloth. Um, so. so we're going to take our stencil. And I'm just going to take some tape, right? And uh, I'm going to tape. You know, make some little loops. And we're gonna put them on there. So I see people use like a printer. I'm gonna print out their favorite picture and then cut it out kind of that way. Or I've seen people take like magazine pictures or posters and kind of do that. And you want to make sure you get your placement pretty good. And I really don't want to go past this line here, so I'm just gonna do this right here. And make sure all your paper is flat. So we're not going to use this stencil extensively. That's why it's made of paper. Um, and it's what I would call a throwaway stencil. It's one-time use. And then after this, we're probably never going to use it again. So now we need to make some paint, right? So what I have here is some um, urethane reducer, right? And this is just the stuff they sell at the local paint store. Um, I got this thing for like 20 bucks. I think this, this big one gallon, I think it was, or $10. I don't know. It was pretty cheap. But I also have some white base coat here from the last job that I did. It's some Acura Championship White. And we're going to take some of this and some of our reducer here, and we're going to make our paint. So I'm just going to open this up. All right. You take your airbrush. Make sure you mix up your paint real good. And then 
we're going to take some reducer. And I always like putting in the reducer first and just not fill it up, but like almost all the way, like three fourths of the way, right? Fill that up. And you can just close this reducer off, set it off to the side. And then using our stick here, only what drips off on into there. It's about what we need. Maybe do that twice. That's about it. Close this up. So now we have this. Make sure you shake it up real good. And that's pretty much it. You have your pan ready. Make sure your cap's not blocked off. Make some clouds here. And I'm going to use part of my circle here to make like a moon. And we're just going to start laying this all in with white. Right? I do have some blue pearl um, paint to match this paint, and we're going to kind of use that to detail it in later on. And then I have some black that we're going to go over. But for now, we're just going to start off with the really reduced white, and we're just going to kind of from far away, um, I'm going to start off by making the moon. And again, it's going to be really fine. So you start it off, right? You lay your, your thing, and that's all you want. You just want that nice uh, shape, and then you can work it in with freehand. So this is what we're going to do with the stencil. I'm just going to go around the stencil, you know, lightly cover the areas on the outside of it. And because it's really reduced, so it's really easy to build upon. Um, once you have a base, you can just kind of work it right over right away. You don't have to wait for it to dry or anything like that. And because this is the end of the saddlebag, I kind of like to do this little flame off effect here um, just to make it look kind of cool going off. And I wouldn't say throw this away just yet because you might need it and we might use it again. So it's good to just put that aside. And there you go. You can kind of see how it's already coming. You know, it look, already looks like a cool reaper. Like I haven't even done much of anything. Um, so, yeah, now we're going to start in <clears throat> by cutting in a lot of, uh, like, his uh, face here, his skull face and his arm. And, uh, you know... I really don't have any tips for this besides freehand because that's a lot of what I do. So I'm going to start off over here. All right. And so you want to make sure you keep your pressure way down too. Um, I believe we're working at about 20 PSI. I'm going to double check. And so now all I'm going to do is to create some really, really white tones and take some more of our white and we're just going to add some more. See, like we still haven't even used that much paint. There's a good look how much paint's in there. So I add about two more little drip sticks full. And we're just going to shake that up. And this is what's really going to give us some really, really bright white, right? So the first set of white was really reduced. Now we're just going to go back and add some highlights to that. Then we're going to add some blue. Now, my general preference is to add just the hyper white on the main picture to leave all the background. Maybe we'll add some on the moon, but like all the background that I already did with the other white is to not touch it with this white. So that, that kind of gives it some depth.
John, and this is the color of the bike. So what we're going to do, let's just add some of that blue pearl here to our white. And we just need a little bit, just about that much. And it's going to make us a nice, uh, like, light blue, I guess. And uh, I guess we're not being so exact with the colors. I'm just kind of, you know, doing some kind of cool here. And there's a lot of areas where I'm just going to kind of lay it over. You know, because I don't want those areas to really be white. I want it to be like a nice light blue. And we're going to add some of the background. So I'm just kind of going back, coloring it in, in a little bit. Being a little generous on where I'm going now. Not really being too precise. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some, a little bit of detail onto our moon here. And it's kind of opaque, so it's going to, it's going to go over those other parts. And it's, it's going to cover the dark. You use it as a way of adding detail to it, just like color everything. Make sure you're kind of giving it some shape as you go along. And I'm going to add some of these blue, light blue strokes kind of coming off here. Again, that's just giving these little flame bits depth so that it's not just, you know, a gray flame kind of going off have all these other stuff happening as well you really want to give it everything in detail you don't want to just leave something behind That's what I, like to do. I think we're pretty much done with this white in here so we could go ahead and dump this out so we're going to take some blue pearl now and first refill with reducer right or maybe about halfway because we're not going to use this so much but maybe about halfway with reducer up here. I wish it really. I wish I had like a little. I need to get a some kind of a bottle for that, so I don't have to use a big ass gallon. But we're just gonna take a little bit of our blue here. Let's do two good ones for half full. And now using this blue, you can really see I'm starting to give it shape. And really using those two foundations of white that we gave it to really start bringing it to life and really start giving it some definition So <clears throat> pretty much having most of that done in there, we're going to switch off to some black. Okay. Now we got some black. And uh, black, um, I really want to cut in his outfit. And just a few details here and there, but really it's for his outfit because I really want that to stick out. So I'm going to just focus on that first. Get some white out of here. Mix that up really, really good. Okay. And so I'm just going to, again, just going to start working in some white. And now these are the final, final highlights. So I just want to make sure get some stuff really nice and clean in there. So we're getting near the end here. Just make sure you highlight everything you want to be highlighted. Because once it's done, it's done, bun. Done, bun. So make sure you get it on in. I'm trying not to hit the background with it. Just
All right. What's up, guys? So here we are, day three, and we got all our artwork done, right? Everything is nice and ready, and we're ready to put some clear coat on it. <coughs> but what we've got to do is clean it off and get it ready for clear. So first thing we want to do and we need is like a microfiber cloth like this one. Or just a regular microfiber cloth. And, you know, you've seen me use alcohol to wipe it before doing the art. But uh, usually before I lay clear, I like using an actual wax and grease remover. And for that, we have this wipeout surface prep. Um, and you got to be careful. There's some that are white and there's some that are spray. So make sure you get the right one for you. You're going to need this, of course. You're going to need a tack cloth like this one for after we're done wiping it with this. We're going to need to go back and make sure we get all the fiber cloths off. Um, all the, any of the fiber that the fiber cloth leaves behind, we got to make sure we get it off. We got to mix up some clear first. So I have this Wanda uh, 2K clear. It's a four to one mix ratio, and that's what we're gonna use today. So this is what I'm actually gonna start off by doing. I'm gonna start off by mixing up the clear first, right? Here we got a mixing cup. It says four to one right there. We're gonna mix it up. Then you want to mix that up. You don't want to just add it together. You want to mix it in. So stir it real good. Get a mixing stick and stir that up real, real good. So this is not going to get hard right away. It's going to obviously you're going to have like I would say keep yourself about an hour that you'll be able to spray this real nice and easy. After an hour, it might start getting a little gummy and stuff like that. But you just want to make sure you stir it up real good. So we're gonna clean up our parts over here now. All right? So I'm gonna take my cloth here, wet my rag <clears throat> really, really good. Don't be shy to use quite a bit of this. And just make sure you wipe everything out through. Make sure you're using a clean cloth. There you go. <clears throat> Once you got that all wiped off, give it a minute to really get dry, right? Then you're gonna take your tack cloth, and just make sure you give it you know, a good wipe. And then this will pick up any fibers left behind by your cloth and anything that just might be stuck on there, giving you a super clean surface. Use gloves, make sure you don't get fingerprints on it. Keep it super clean. Here's where the fun part starts, right? Get the chair out of the way here. And then start laying some clear. So I got my gun here, and it's the Segola 4600 Extreme. Uh, it's a pretty good gun. And uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear in here. Is that I'm gonna go ahead and lay what's called an adhesion coat, which is what I would call just the light coat over over the pretty much everything, right? Just a light, really nice base coat. And uh, we want to let that sit and really stick on first. And then we're gonna go back and lay a couple heavier coats as we go along. But this first adhesion coat, um, it's just gonna be kind of quick, kind of fast. And it's just to get the, the first good, nice uh, coverage on the pieces. Put my mask on, you'll see me do the adhesion coat, and then I'll come back once it's a little bit drier and show you a little bit of a tack and how, what you be, should be looking for um, before you spray your next coat. But I'm gonna move you guys a little closer here. Okay, uh, so if you can hear me, you can see you got the adhesion put on there, and it's already looking pretty shiny, right? So you want to test for tack. And once you can touch it, 
and you don't get a trail or a string and it's just kind of it's tacky but it's not pulling away from the surface it's probably ready for the next coat and this being 2k clear um it's it's you know it's pretty quick to be ready especially with a really light coat like that so i'm gonna just wait a, a minute or two i'm gonna give it another layer and then i'm gonna you know after that layer again we're gonna wait another 10 15 minutes that one will wait a little bit longer because this next coat is going to be heavier and then we'll lay uh, the last and final coat so we'll do three coats on this uh, so le voy a dar otra capa y esta capa va a estar un poco más pesada so entre uh, i think it's ready for the next coat But as you can see, they're pretty much, they're pretty shiny. And the last coat is really just going to cover everything. And we're going to lay that on one on uh, pretty thick. You can see here what we have finished um, the saddlebags. I'll just lift them up so you guys can see here one by one. They're super shiny, really nice parts. And, uh, just want to go over a few things with you guys and just really want to show these to you guys because this is about as far as I'm going to go with these. Um, but as you can see, they look really good. I'm really happy with them. And there's the one we did on stream. back of that one so yeah a couple things I want to talk about right so first and foremost if you find an imperfection right so say fly landed on your stuff or you got a piece of dust or what have you right um, and it happens um, so I just want to show you a quick, easy way to get any of that out. So these came out really, really nice. There's really nothing on them. There's dust on them now from sitting, you know, behind, but <clears throat> you take some 1500 grit and your sanding block. I don't know where my sanding block is right now, but you know, you just go and smooth those out really light, just smooth those out. And then you take some rubbing compound or some polish or wax and uh, just, you know, rub it um, in those areas or use a polisher to really polish those areas up. Um, if you really, really, really wanted to go over everything, um, of course it's possible, but like on these, as you can see, they're like super shiny. I mean, I, I wouldn't even see a reason to do that. You can see the pearls in the blue as it goes. So yeah. Um, and then another thing to remember too is like when you're putting it back together, um, it's always good to remember like if say, you know, this goes right here and you know you're gonna be working in this area, just use some light tack tape, you know, and put those, put that around that area. You'll be able to take it off afterwards, obviously. But that way you don't risk, uh, you know, hitting that with your screwdriver or, you know, getting with your fingernail or whatever, you know, it is. Um, or just with the piece itself, you know, you don't have to be um, <clears throat> so stringent about 
how you're going to put it together, you get yourself a little bit of a leeway here as to where you're working. And so long as you're careful, you know, and you did everything right, you know, taking it off is not really a big issue. So I'll save you guys all the, the what would be a really boring stream of me putting it back together. And I don't need to put these back together because they're going off um, to a separate place to get some more stuff. Um, like these are being replaced and something having to do with something else. I'm not sure, some speaker or something. So they want it like this, and that's how I'm going to leave it. Hopefully that helps you guys out. I know that's a really quick, fast one, but I just wanted to show you guys them, like I said, and just explain those quick things. And yeah.